welcome. Uh, I you. applaud you for all the work you've done over the years, and uh, we're fortunate to have Alan Powell, the one of the co-founders uh, of the National Technical Honor Society. You've done so much good work for so many years, and in addition to that, current CEO and leader of the National Technical Honor Society. And so as uh, you have a very rewarding career and one that has uh, meant so much to so many people, uh, you're you. coming uh, close to your retirement. Uh, those days for all of us uh, come closer as time goes right. on. And I think one of the things I'd like uh, to ask you about today is about leadership. Leadership, okay. And uh, it's clear that you have done that for some time. So uh, first thing I'm going to uh, ask you is simply this. Uh, what is the most important quality an effective leader can have? Hmm. Well, Dr. Keene, um, I'm sure there are, a lot, there are a lot of books I've read on leadership, and you probably have too, but uh, it's always been my experience, and probably the way I have approached leadership is um, modeling people that have been important to me, people that I respect. I look to see what they're doing, and I think leadership is more about um, the example you set the, um, in any role that you have, especially in education. Um, you know, we all have role models, and I've been fortunate, and as I'm sure you have been too, and having been uh, exposed to some strong leaders, people that you felt like were worth emulating in your own life, and uh, that's what I think is the most important thing. You know, you've got to be willing to set a good, strong, positive example for other people and, um, and, and be vigilant and be hard on yourself, you know, because you can't do it 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. But uh, that, to me, is, the, uh, is, is at the center of what a leader should be, is a person who's willing to set the right example, a person who um, not only talks about integrity, but, but shows that in their life. So it's a kind of a walk the walk and not talk to talk mm -hmm. kind of a thing. So. It's really interesting you uh, consider things of what you just said, and some people perceive leaders to be those that rule with an iron hand, when in reality, some of the strongest leaders, uh, they rule with a velvet touch. Mm -hmm. It's literally a situation to where it changes according to people and according to circumstances and situations that you face. Yeah, uh, and I think it, it shows up uh, in times, you know, when tough times come. Uh, it, it, it uh, shows, you know, who's capable of handling those situations, uh, you know, without falling apart. <laughs> uh, you know, it, but in the good times too, you know, and I think in, um, good leadership shows in the best of times. Um, and, uh, you know, showing your appreciation for your people. And I, I, I see you, you've done so much of that here at Fayetteville Technical Community College. And, that's what I try to do. You know, from the time I, I've been a coach, a high school principal, a school superintendent, uh, and head of a career tech school, um, I just I, I loved what I did, and I think I, uh, you know, finding uh, and following my, uh, my dream to have the Honor Society be a, a national organization, uh, I, I, I put everything I had into it, and it, uh, it's paid off. So in your, in your journey, did you find that you had great joy in seeing people develop and uh, fulfill the missions or the visions that you oh, had for yes. the National Technical oh, Honor yes. Society? Um, it, what's been a, a, you know, today we, we serve close to 4,500 schools and colleges throughout the U.S. and some uh, overseas. Um, the, the, where the rubber really hits the road for us is in our individual chapters we have these volunteers, these advisors, and uh, if they weren't passionate about the students that they serve and the programs that they teach, um, we wouldn't be able to, uh, we couldn't possibly afford to pay that many people. Um, they do it because of their love of what they do in career and tactical education, uh, their extraordinary leadership that they uh, exhibit in their schools or colleges, and they're, you know, their importance of, they want to lift up their students. They want to bring more recognition to young people and adults who are doing the right thing. At the end of the day, it's a people business. 
Yes. It's caring for people, it's loving people, it's helping mm -hmm. people uh, see beyond what they think they can do. Mm -hmm. And it's learning to learn as well as yeah. leaders to learn that uh, you never know it all. Mm -hmm. uh, there are so many people that know more than we. Uh, and yet to enlist their support and their encouragement and their engagement in the process mm -hmm. to accomplish your goal is so critically important. Yes. Yeah, and we've got to remember too that you know you and I are are playing a role in 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 the path they've chosen. And uh, you know, it's, I think it's incumbent on us to, to 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 be the right person to help to help them get you know make that next step. As a leader, we all want to uh, enjoy the good days, and, yes. and sometimes those good days uh, are few and far between, but you still engage in the process. So mm -hmm. reflecting back on the process of building the National Technical Honor Society, is there anything you wish you had done differently? Hmm. Uh, that's an interesting question. Uh, I wish I'd do it sooner. You know, it's, uh, we started the organization in 1984 um, for, for a number of years. Uh, as a director of a career tech center in South Carolina. Um, I had w witnessed the, um, the image of, at that time, vocational technical education, sort of, you know, take a nosedive. And, um, you know, that was when administrators like me got together all over the state. We'd spend way more time talking about our poor image than we would talking about you know, how could we improve that image? And um, I was fortunate, you know, to get the idea one, one day coming back from Columbia, South Carolina, having sat through two hours of hearing a lot of complaining about our image, and I said, well, I, maybe we can't do anything for everybody, but we can do something for the students at our school. And we wanted to find a way to lift them up. So I wish I had had that interest earlier, you know, just, it would have been, you know, there were more students at our school that we could have recognized than other schools. But I think it had, apparently this was the right time. Um, sometimes you have to wait till things get really bad before you can find uh, an improvement solution. And I'm, I'm hoping we've been part of that. I also have to give credit to uh, people like you, leaders in the community colleges throughout the nation, um, the career and technical student organizations, and hundreds of thousands of, of teachers, dedicated teachers that, that really have bought into the idea of lifting up achievement. They say all, always that necessity is the mother of invention. <laughs> and so sometimes when you see the things that you're describing and you see that there's disparagement or there's some kind of negative information regarding uh, what really deserves great dignity, Mm -hmm. uh, it stimulates a movement. So I know you and John Bo Poteet mm -hmm. and Patricia Poteet came together as the original uh, co-founders yes. of NTHS. Uh, tell us a little bit about that and what stimulated that movement to the future. Well, uh, here again, we go back in time <laughs> to the 80s. Um, I've come back from that meeting uh, fully fired up, saying, you know, I'm, I'm tired of hearing all us complaining. John. John was an extraordinary person. Uh, we lost him a number of years ago uh, to early onset Alzheimer's. I th he started showing symptoms of that when he was still in his 40s. And, uh, but he was a remarkable person, had a great love for young people. He, like me, was a former ag teacher. Now, for a couple of ag teachers to come up with an honor society was probably uh, not expected. <laughs> But uh, I think you know our experience in teaching young people in in the ag field of agriculture and our involvement at FFA uh, really motivated us to to do something. So he jumped on board right away. And uh, since we were both still there at the school and we were kind of struggling, you know, trying to figure things out, uh, all of our meetings would be done around the kitchen table at John and Pat's house, which is just a couple of a <laughs> uh, couple of miles away. And it worked out nicely because. Uh, Pat was a pretty good cook, and uh, <laughs> we would bring our three boys, and they had three girls, uh, and we would all sit around this big table and talk about this. And uh, that's really out of Ob. So the logo, the motto, uh, all of those things, the colors for the Honor Society, what they represent, all that happened around that kitchen table. And uh, once we thought we had a, uh, uh, a plan in place, you know, I applied for 
organization to be a nonprofit uh, uh, educational organization. I didn't want it to be ever considered to be a private or a for-profit organization. I would not have respected that, and I didn't think education community would. So it moved in that direction. Uh, and our first chapters, of course, were schools in South Carolina because I was part of that network. And then we started to build chapters outside in other states. And it sort of reached a point where uh, I, I felt like, well, I can't do both. You know, I have to, I have to cut bait and you know, decide what I'm, where I'm going to fish. And uh, John uh, continued to stay on as a counselor until he became too ill to stay. And uh, we moved our first offices to John and Pat's house in their basement. And uh, it's sort of a basement business <laughs> designed around a kitchen table. So uh, to, to us, it's, it was a dream come true. So many great organizations and so many great companies uh, start at somebody's kitchen table or they start in a basement. Or the garage. And they grow, or the garage, oh, yeah. and they grow over time. You're exactly right. What has been the most rewarding aspect of being a leader as you've experienced it? Oh, I think it, it always is. And uh, it, uh, it, it, it recharges my batteries to, to be at a, at a, uh, to get to see the students, to come to an induction program like I you know, hope to attend tonight here, uh, to, to maybe hear some of their stories. You know, these, so many of your students have made great sacrifices, but this is part of their dream. And to, feel, to, to see the pride in themselves, uh, the faculty, and certainly their families, uh, it just doesn't get any better than that for me. Um, that's, you know, that's the big payoff for me, is to, is to see that. You know, I, and we hear about it a lot, we get a lot of social media, and so forth, there's nothing like being there the, the day it happens. And uh, I, you know, I might hear a good story, I might shake hands uh, with students, that's fun. To me, I think one of the most enjoyable elements of what we do is getting to see them in the eyes mm -hmm. and see the sparkle, see the excitement, see the confidence that's born mm -hmm. from times that perhaps have been more difficult. Now, you may not know this, but tonight, uh, one of the people is going to be streaming live and watching a live uh, stream uh, from Iraq. Really? Uh, who's one oh of our students goodness. who's uh, graduating and being inducted into the uh, NTHS. Another mm -hmm. student has had some devastating experiences in life, a very capable student, mm -hmm. but life circumstances have had some dramatic impacts on her life and yet she uh, arises tonight in that induction. She has a 3.95 grade point average mm -hmm. in going forth. Another young lady, similar circumstances, difficulties, um, is successful in raising her children, but at the same time, she is about to graduate from Fayetteville State University uh, as mm -hmm. a result of the things that we've all been able to do together. So when you really have an opportunity to see the growth and the development and the uh, opportunities that these people are able to embrace, mm -hmm. then that really brings the satisfaction to us that as leaders you sacrifice a lot. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you sacrifice uh, time mm -hmm. with your own family. Uh, right. Sometimes you sacrifice uh, fortunes uh, in, in support of what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. uh, the net result is though if you can really help these people move forward and go beyond where they thought they could have gone in the first place, you've really done something as a leader. So I mm -hmm. think that's the exciting part about this. What advice would you give to individuals beginning their journey into a leadership role? Well, the reason they're here, the reason they choose career or technical education is it's part of their dream. It's a step, you know, it's not the, it's not the ultimate goal. Um, the fact that America supports career and technical education, that we have great schools uh, and colleges like Fayetteville Technical Community College, uh, it's helping dreams come true for a lot of people. Um, and, you know, we, we saw quite a few of them today. And um, I, th I think, and I'm going to hopefully express a little something about this tonight, is, is to encourage students to, to hang on to that dream, to don't let doubt or what other people think they should do interfere with their plan. Uh, that's their plan. That's their uh, goal. Um, and 
you know, oftentimes it's uh, people succumb to the thought, to doubts. You know, they, they hit a roadblock and they, you know, they just want to throw in a towel and say, I can't do it. It's, it's, if you say that to yourself, you're not going to. And so, you know, my, my point of that is, you know, if you've, if you've got a dream, you know, nobody's going to, nobody's going to drag you into it. You've got to, you've got to roll up your sleeves and make it happen. And faith is a very powerful uh, part of that. You know, have faith in yourself. Uh, you've, you've taken this step here at the college. Don't stop here. You know, this is, this is not your lifetime journey. This is a step in the right direction. So. I would agree with that. I think uh, it's like the old biblical story. You don't just step back and say, okay, I've got faith. I come do all this for me. I mean, you've got to do your part too. Absolutely. And that's where we're blessed and given the ability and the gifts to do mm -hmm. things to help other people. The point being, if we'll just take advantage of that, Mm -hmm. and then receive the help yep. that is provided, then I think good things can happen for us. Yes. So how do you measure a success or how do you measure success as a leader? Are you happy? Are you happy as president of yes, this I college? Am. Um, then you're very successful. And uh, you don't, it's, it's happiness that comes from what you see going on around you. You know, uh, today I saw uh, a lot of smiles here as we talked to faculty and students. Um, you know, that, 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 that sort of gets that heart going. You know, you see these people are, they're, they're enjoying, they're not only helping themselves, they're enjoying what they're doing. So um, to me, that's, that's important. Um, you know, find that happiness place in, and focus more of your life on looking for it looking for reasons to feel good about what you see, what you do, and the life you have. You know, we, we don't get this forever, you know. Uh, so let's, let's do the best we can with what we got. Uh, that's sort of my simple little philosophy. I, I support that 100%. And I, I hope you saw today uh, some of the things that I saw. Uh, mm -hmm. There are some individuals who think that leadership emanates from one person. Not so. It takes everybody at every level to make yeah. uh, these things happen. And so when everybody engages toward the same purpose with enthusiasm and passion and expertise mm -hmm. that they bring to the circumstances, then great things can happen from my perspective. Mm -hmm. Well, you wrote a book uh, oh, relative, <laughs> relative to your start in, in uh, vocational technical education mm -hmm. called The Hog Farm. Yeah. Could, you, could you take just a few minutes to tell us about that and how, oh. uh, you know, how that started and then how that contributed to your uh, lessons uh, of leadership? Well, I guess my first three years of teaching, you know, sort of set my path. Uh, it was a very extraordinary situation in uh, South Carolina. Um, it was a result of a, uh, a grant that had been written by some education wizards at the uh, collegiate level, um, but uh, it was in a school district where there were uh, three junior high schools and they had industrial arts programs or ag programs and, and they had some problems. They, some of these eighth and ninth grade boys that were involved in these programs were a little unruly and uh, the uh, solution. As, as eighth and ninth grade boys can be. Yeah, the solution <laughs> they came up with and they wrote this grant, Title I, it was funded for three years, uh, was to, okay, we'll, we'll go to the three junior high schools and we'll select 10 boys from each of those schools, rising ninth graders, with the, with the biggest rap sheet, who've missed a lot of school, who've been in trouble, who've been suspended, and we'll send them over to another school that uh, it's called at McDuffie High School in Anderson, South Carolina. And uh, we'll, we'll create this program. And we expect to improve their study skills because they're not doing very well. We expect to improve their math skills. They're not doing very well in that either because they don't care anything about arithmetic. Um, really, they don't care about going to school. They just do it because they have to. And so uh, we moved this program to McDuffie and uh, basically, I was just given a, a, an old barn kind of a thing, an old Quonset hut that had once been part of the ag shop. And they put me down there and said, okay, the kids show up in the next few days. What are you going to do? <laughs> I had no curriculum. So uh, it was a journey, but uh, 
They were called the uh, hogs because the place they had at the back of the high school at one time had uh, the ag program had raised hogs back there. So they called it the hog farm. So we were the hogs. And they didn't <laughs> disappoint us. <laughs> they were mischievous, they were clever, uh, they were fun. And I think over time, I learned more from them than they learned from me. Um, but it, those were three extraordinary years, and um, we were able to get them engaged by you know, finding things that they enjoyed doing uh, with their hands. You know, a lot of they were wood shop things, they were mechanical things, they were things in horticulture. Uh, but of course, the main purpose was to try to keep them in school because they had predicted that maybe 10% of them would actually graduate high school. After three years, and we followed them, almost 80% of them graduated from high school. Um, we had to regenerate that interest in getting that education. And it was it was it was fun. And I understand you've got a copy of that book. Yes, I do. <laughs> uh, let me ask this question: What did they teach you? I, well, I did read your book, and uh, there was one point in there where you said uh, that you may have learned more from them than they learned from you. What did they teach you about being a leader? Well, okay, <laughs> I. I learned, I said, well, you know, the, we would call the hogs, you know, that, that was it. And, and, and it, I learned that I was probably making a more tra a transition into a hog than they were over time, you know, because of their sometimes bizarre behavior. And they were very clever. They could come up with some very interesting things to do with their time. And uh, they called it hog rhythm, you know, get in hog rhythm. And I think I, I, I gained a little bit of that. But as uh, testing as it was from time to time, and as difficult as it was from time to time, it was, it was all a great experience. And um, you know, I think at the end of the book, I said, you know, uh, in final analysis, after it's all over, God loves these hogs and so do I. Because uh, it was an extraordinary, rare opportunity to, uh, for me to, uh, to me to learn how to be a teacher. And therein is, I think, a part of leadership. Uh, and you just said the magic word, and that's love, those hogs. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, there's been some research done in the past that went back and tried to find uh, the sources of very successful people. And on one I remember reading, uh, it went back to a, a, a school teacher in the junior high school at that time, mm -hmm. and uh, elementary schools. And the one common word that those uh, people, male and female, shared about this one teacher was that they thought that she loved them mm -hmm. and that she cared about them and that she went the extra mile to demonstrate that. And you know, so often as leaders, I think that's one of the things that we need to do to demonstrate not only our care, but our love for those people because at the end of the day, the investment we make of our own lives into their lives and theirs into ours matters. Mm -hmm. The question is how much do we want it to matter and how big a difference do we want it to make? Mm -hmm. yeah. So it has been a joy to sit here and visit with you for a few minutes and sure. ask your perspectives on leadership. I thank you for joining me today. Sure. Uh, you saw what I think for both of us has been uh, the results of a beautiful day, whether it's the students, the faculty, the staff, and others mm -hmm. that are doing such a good job. Yes, uh, and yet it takes all of us to make it happen. It's not mm -hmm. one leader, it's not two leaders. It takes literally everybody doing what they're supposed to do consistently mm -hmm. and doing it consistently well. Right. Uh, and then when you do fall short, uh, finding, hey, that there's a better day tomorrow, there's a better day in the next hour, and you just work toward it. Mm -hmm. And then you accomplish whatever you need to accomplish. So it has been a joy to be with you today, and thank you for the leadership yeah. that you, thank John, you. and Patricia created to create the National Technical Honor Society. Well done. Mm -hmm. And as you come to your retirement years, I trust and I know that you will be just as successful in those as you've been in the NTH journey. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Dr. Thank King. you, sir. I appreciate yep. you and your friendship and the role you serve here and the role you serve with our organization and as president of our board. Thank you so Greatly much. Greatly appreciate it.